If you have gone to the farmer's market, you will certainly notice that a large number of sellers sell exactly the same goods. So, if one farmer decides to increase the price of his own goods, let's say a cup of rice, it is very easy for buyers to go to another seller to get that cup of rice at an existing lower price. This means that it is difficult for a single seller to influence the market's price of these goods. The other way is also true. In this market structure, buyers cannot influence the price of goods and services. When a buyer demands for a given quantity of goods at a lower price, sellers won't sell. Do you know why? Because they are aware the buyers who will buy at the prevailing price are available. This is because there is a large number of buyers as there are sellers. So it is really difficult for one buyer or one seller to influence prices. In general, a perfect competition is defined as a market structure in which buyers and sellers cannot influence the price of goods and services. The perfect competition is also known as a competitive market or a perfect market. Now that we know what a perfect competition is, we would like to know the conditions that are necessary for a perfect competition. One of the first conditions is that the goods must be homogeneous. This means that the goods must be identical. Remember our farmer's market? In this case, a bag of rice is quite similar to another bag of rice, irrespective of who the seller is. Now another condition is the fact that there is free entry and exit into the market. This means that it is easy for new sellers to come into the market and existing sellers to leave the market without any form of barrier. In a perfect competition, as previously mentioned, there is a large number of buyers and sellers with individual buyers or sellers that do not influence the market prices. Finally, there is also a perfect knowledge of the price of goods and services and such prices are the same in the market. So always remember that a perfect market, one buyer or one seller cannot influence the price of a good or a service. Also remember that there is a large number of buyers and sellers in the markets. The goods and services sold are identical to each other and everyone is fully aware of the price of the product. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. Our upcoming lessons will feature other interesting types of market structures, so do not miss them. I'll see you there. Bye!